Good to see you. Hi, Lynn. Thanks Hi. for being here. Yeah, that's good. Um, so this is a, a conversation that we've been thinking about having haven't we, for a little while. Um, the intention mm -hmm. being, I think, to throw some ideas around that we're both really interested in about mindset. Um, but from my perspective, um, this is for my um, course members on my directions and abstraction course. Um, mm -hmm. I'm hoping that they're going to find this interesting, this conversation, because um, it's something that I'm spending quite a bit of time focusing on um, throughout the course. I know this is something that you're really interested in as well, yeah. um, in lots of different ways. Um, so I think we said we'd start, didn't we, by a bit of introduction. Um, yeah, I, mean, I think they're good. That'd be, be great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, do you want to just say a little bit about yourself and maybe we can also sure. talk about how we met? Yeah, well, my name is Cheryl Taves, and I'm a first an artist and second a creativity coach. Um, and I've been working in this modality for quite some time now as a coach. Um, some people know me from Art to Life because I was connected. And actually, that's how I originally met Lynn way back when was through mm. Nicholas Wilton's program, Art to Life. Um, and I'm really interested in the aspects of mindset as a coach. So I love supporting artists is one of the areas that I struggled with the most as an artist. And so as I found my pathway through that, I really felt like it was something I wanted to be able to help other artists with. And that actually, you know, uh, became quite clear as I was working as a coach in Art to Life, you know, that that was a huge part of uh, the mm the process that people were engaged with, you know, not yeah. only just the materials and techniques, but understanding their own uh, inner landscape as they were, you know, making their art. So, um, so that's, that's what I'm doing these days and, and enjoying it immensely. Um, I love talking about the subject and this is a, you know, opportunity to talk with you is always wonderful. We have rich conversations. So I really appreciate yeah. being here and being able to sort of expand on this topic with you a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much for um, for coming as well. I very much appreciate you giving your time. Um, yeah, I mean, from my perspective on this, and I guess for um, the people in your groups, um, you know, Cheryl and I, she said we met on Art to Life, and I'd been painting at that point probably for about, I think it must have been about eight or nine years, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been doing representational work, and I got interested in abstraction, and that's kind of, I caught Nick's course, and that got me interested. Right. And then I think, you know, following that, I kind of took a much deeper dive, I think, into, um, you know, my kind of abstract ideas and develop my work from there. But all the time, because um, I came to this with a, a background in psychotherapy, you know, one of the things that struck me um, really clearly, actually, and this was quite early on, actually, when I'd started painting, um, probably really within the first year or so, you know, one of the things I kind of got this sense of was that actually the the work that I'd done on myself I think you know in terms of my um kind of just working through you know kind of personal difficulties and all that kind of stuff was incredibly valuable actually for me and my art you know it just meant I felt more willing to risk more willing to play more willing to experiment um you know and I kind of noticed that in me and I think because of that you know I mean it's meant that I think were um, now in the, the work that I do as a, you know, as a kind of a teacher and a coach alongside my art itself, that I think that really underpins everything that I do, you know, and I, mm -hmm. I think about that a lot when I'm teaching people, I mean, I guess like you do, you know, that actually it is really important to go the skills, isn't it? And it's really important yes. to kind of have the techniques and to have a decent kind of solid art practice and a, and a way of going about things. But it's like, I think our relationship with ourselves as artists is really important actually absolutely so well said and I think you know you touched on something that really interesting because you had that foundation in psychotherapy and you understood you know the inner yeah. belief system and the way we operate it was it was there for you to draw upon I didn't have quite that same experience to draw on but what I I did do a lot of my own counseling and I was a lay counselor for a number of years so I had an awareness of it but I was yeah. absolutely blown away <laughs> at the struggle I was having you know, as try when I was trying to make my art and I'd worked, you know, for, you know, same, same amount of time, like eight, 10 years. And I was continually bumping up against this thing, right? This, this yeah. thing was in my way all the time. I had learned everything I wanted to learn. I'd taken all these courses, but I still was sort of somehow hemmed up with, with something. And it was incredibly painful for me that that was happening. Cause I had this awareness that, you know, there's, but I hadn't kind of put it together 
like that. Mm -hmm. I hadn't recognized the power of my mindset and my thoughts and beliefs. And what I was actually struggling with was my own fear, you know, and the experience I was having around uh, my beliefs and limiting myself and constantly in resistance and struggle. So, you know, that was a big epiphany for me to to kind of recognize Mm -hmm. that and then be able to start working with it you know myself and then also getting some help yeah well. yeah and then uh, you know well I think once we've done that we can then help other people can't we as well I think yeah yeah because you have that personal experience to draw on and under yeah. and, you know I really understand what people go through what artists go through because I've been yeah. there too right yeah, and you well, have yeah. as well yeah yeah I mean I think one of the things we were going to do wasn't it was just talk a little bit about what we understand mindset to be when we kind of throw that term out there Yes. And, you know, yeah. before we started, you were saying, what did I think about that? And I was saying that, you know, for me, I think it is that um, it is that belief system that we hold about ourselves, not just about ourselves. Actually, I think it also encompasses, you know, the belief system that we hold about art itself, mm-hmm. you know, about ourselves as artists. And I think very much about our relationship with ourselves, which we then, I think, live out in relationship with other people in, you know, particularly around around art. You know, so I think it affects so many absolutely virtually just about every aspect, I think, of what we might do as an artist, you know, to how we feel about the time in the studio, to how we feel about um, our relationship with other artists, how we feel about approaching galleries if we are wanting to, you know, develop kind of art business. Um, mm-hmm. yeah it's everywhere actually even even to the point of how do I change this painting yeah how do I take what I've yeah. got and move it over here you know I know it isn't quite working but I'm terrified to touch it you know yeah. I mean it get, comes right down to to yeah to even the work itself it's everywhere everywhere it's so prevalent and in yeah. and it was never it, for me it was never taught that was what I thought was interesting too as an artist it wasn't a part of the component of learning that I experienced mm-hmm. in any formal training or any program so the work that you're doing and the work that I'm doing and a lot of other coaches are doing now around mindset yeah. I think is so helpful you know for people to understand that very important yeah. aspect of being a, a creative and an artist because it's it's hard work being an artist Mm, it can yeah. be yeah it yeah. can be yeah, yeah definitely yeah. it can be I wouldn't it's demanding I mean it, it, it you have good days and bad days but it's certainly demanding that's you yeah know, it I think there's a lot of us I think that's yeah. exactly what I was going to say I think it does ask a lot of us yeah I think I think I think one of the things you know if I think about that question you're like what is the what are the things I that I think um being an artist really asks of us mm-hmm. I think it asks us to be really willing to um I guess to be open to our own kind of process actually and I suppose what I mean by that is to be willing to really notice you know what we are um, how those beliefs and you know how that those those sets of beliefs and value systems are showing up actually you know yeah. both in the in the kind of the really moment by moment experience we might be having in the work like you know is it okay for me to use this color and this make this mark you know or not through to you know the bit much bigger stuff like you know am I willing to put myself out there on Instagram or you know to start showing my work or you know whatever so I, I yeah. think it's right from like you were saying those moment by moment kind of experiences up to the really big stuff as well actually mm-hmm. yeah it's everywhere and it's such a it's, it's such an interesting thing, I think, to be able to talk about it and to be able to sort of normalize it as part of the experience, right? Yeah, that, absolutely. Because I think that's how absolutely. it doesn't become hard, right? That's how yeah. it doesn't become hard is because we normalize it, we recognize it. And I think what we talked about earlier too was the value of reflection, you know, the value mm-hmm. of actually, as you just shared, you know, being able to be willing to be curious, to look at yourself, to, to meet yourself with that curiosity and compassion, to look at what's occurring so that you have yeah. that space, you know, to, to strengthen yeah. and be more resilient in the areas that you, you want to be stronger in as you meet your yeah. work or meet the challenge that you might be facing, whether that's stepping out bigger in your work or stepping out bigger into the world with your work, you know, cause that's yeah. another layer for people. So what would yeah, you say? Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to <laughs> yeah. I was I was delayed, sorry. You, yeah, I was going to add up to what you were saying, really, which was about you know this idea of sort of normalizing that experience, you know. And I think what it, for me, what that comes down to is like we've all got psychology, you know. Mm-hmm. We have mm-hmm. we have with mind, we have experiences, you know. We'll have grown up in you know in families, in towns, in cultures of one sort or another, and we pick stuff up because we can't help but do that. 
you know, so I think we are a repository of all of those kind of experiences. But I also think that, you know, it kind of, there's not, there are a few jobs, I think, in life or a few things in life where we come up against that psychology in, a, in its really raw state, you know, because we're being asked to be maybe um, quite vulnerable in some form or other. And I think, you know, painting, being an artist is one of those things where actually you really come into contact with your own vulnerability, you know, because of the, the creative process, because of you know, the risk because of the amount that you might personally invest, I think, you know, in what it feels like to paint and um, the, the experience of that. So, you know, it kind of makes sense, actually, that we would feel those, that we would feel those kind of beliefs and values, you know, in ways that you might not do if you were, I don't know, you know, doing something more mundane, possibly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that it's, um, you know, incredibly valuable that we get that opportunity because for me yeah. there's been nothing more transformative than making art yeah right like with all the work that I've done over the years it was really when I came in um, confrontation with myself as an artist and came to see you know the things that I was still holding on to the layers that I was still needing to work through um, it was actually so transformative to kind of witness that and then move through it and and see that happen in the art but then it was happening within myself at the same time as I took a risk you know in the painting then I felt more courageous in taking a risk in my life you know there was this sort of symbiotic relationship going on between you know the growth that was happening in my creative life and the growth that could happen in my personal life and that was a surprise to me you know I didn't really think that would happen but it but it yeah. did it has this you know it does. yeah it does and and you're so right I mean I've always said that art is like a mirror you know it's revealing ourselves to ourselves and yeah. oftentimes it's you know ahead of us in a way you know we're, we're seeing things that aren't quite we're not maybe quite yet ready to see and so we might be a little unsettled by that and so that you know opportunity to sort of you know stay in connection uh stay connected to your curiosity and and awareness so that you can draw from that amazing resource you know yeah. that's there for you you know because it really is something unique you know there's that saying um you know we don't divorce ourselves from the brush when we step up to the canvas to paint you know we're all there you know yeah. all of us shows up every aspect of us shows up and it's really just attending to that you know with mm. that sort of sensitivity that's so valuable I think in the process of becoming more aware yeah yeah you know if I was thinking about um thinking about you know these people that are the people that are going to be watching this listening yes to this, yes you know if we were to think about what would be one of the things that you think um is important for people to kind of I don't know maybe learn is not quite the word I'm looking for but let's I'll use that word because I can't think of another one so you know what is a really useful aspect do you think for people to develop maybe you know in kind of honing their mindset you know all the things we've been talking about actually how do people get um really in touch with some of the things that you and I have just been sort of saying that we think is important in this area yeah, what, what, well yeah. That yeah, that's a great yeah. question. And, and I know you and I tossed this question around a little bit back when we first thought about having this conversation. Yeah. And we sort of both came to the same conclusion that it was awareness. You know, yeah. having awareness was the first thing. So what is awareness? Right? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be aware? Yeah. Right? And for me, it's like noticing, well, noticing what I notice, but also noticing what's going on inside, noticing yeah. the voice that might be there. The feeling, <laughs> just bringing more awareness to what's occurring. That's the first thing because we can't change what we're not aware of. You know, we can't yeah. we can't make a shift unless we notice that we have this inner critic that's constantly, you know, barking in the back of our head. You know, that's kind of interfering with our process. So that's why I think the process of reflection, and I know you bring that into yeah. your course. You know, reflective writing, not only to kind of look at the work and unpack what's going on, but also to uh, reflect on your own time with the work mm. you know what were you feeling what were you thinking what yeah. was the thought you noticed what was the yeah. energy behind that thought all of yeah. that is I think the beginning step of then making changes to reframe those thoughts to be able to work with them to find ways of um, strengthening your ability to you know guide yourself forward you know when you know you want to move but you're stuck <laughs> you know you're stuck somewhere yeah yeah so, I agree well, with you yeah, no, I, I think for me, it's, it's similar. I mean, uh, there's a psychological term, I think, um, that comes to mind, which is called mentalizing. 
which mm. is, you know, thinking about thinking, thinking about feeling. And, you know, I think you expressed it really well, which is like you know, noticing, noticing the thoughts that you're having, noticing the feelings that you're having. So an example I gave to somebody recently, because they were looking at me and saying, I'm not sure I really understand what you mean. Like, what does that mean? Mm. Thinking about my thinking. Mm. You know, I was saying that, you know, um, one of the things it's almost like you have a like a you're taking a helicopter view and you're observing your own thought patterns so yes. an example of this for me would be we went to um, Rotterdam I think it's a couple of years ago and while we were walking we took a, a boat taxi and we were I was walking around kind of the canal side and the you know all of the port area and as I was doing this, I was looking at the um, looking at the cranes and I was looking at the water and I was looking at the boats. And the things I was thinking about were things like um, I had a really strong sense of history of the place and, you know, what it would have been like, like 100 or 200 years ago, you know, and the kind of boats that would have been there a couple of hundred years ago and what the people would have been wearing. And then I was also thinking about Rotterdam today, you know, and it's placed in Europe and what that's like, you know, and I was then also thinking about how drawn I am to um, the architectural forms, you know, the cranes and the bridges and the, the rust and the decay, you know, and then I kind of, if I, then if I step outside of myself, you know, what I notice in those thoughts, those thoughts and the things I was observing was how the thread is of, you know, a kind of political consciousness, actually, of, you know, Rotterdam and its place in Europe and what was going on at the time, because I think it was, we were kind of going through Brexit and what that felt like, you know, and a feeling of, um, you know, kind of noticing how I felt about that, but also noticing my interest, you know, in um, history and archaeology and how we leave a mark, you know, so the, the marks of people, the marks of buildings, you know, the way in which buildings decay and become old and how you know and then kind of the metaphor of that so you know those things that I notice I think about a lot so you know like mentalizing yeah I'm just noticing my thought patterns and all the things that I get drawn to yeah you know yeah, yeah and and that's really what you're now drawing on for inspiration I assume yeah. right yeah like, and it's very much I, what I draw on for inspiration yeah you know yeah. those kind of metaphors and ideas and imagery not directly but indirectly you know, definitely appear in, in, in the work. So, yeah, so does that, I mean, is that the kind of thing that you think about, Cheryl, when you think about this idea of kind of... I, I do, and I mean, yeah, actually, I was just uh, scrolling through a bunch of images on my... Um, in my iPad the other night and I had taken a picture of a, a post in some city. I don't know which city it is now. It might've been, a, it might've been here. It might've been somewhere else, but it was littered with white placards, you know, different yeah. tones of white and some had gone kind of gritty and dirty and some had kind of turned a, a certain color. And it was just, for me, it was unbelievable um, how I, this is something I want to paint now. Like I was looking at it at the time, captured it on a camera, stored it away. Yeah. This could be years ago, but it, it, it was what you say. So I noticed it. I literally had to stop and take a photo and I didn't do anything with it, you know, at that time. Yeah. But I, today I'm sort of was thinking about a, you know, a white on white painting and immediately that image flashed into my mind and I searched for it. So these things are like seeds too, you know, that we plant there and they yeah. have the opportunity to grow. And, and that's, that's part of the awareness and the other part of the awareness for me is um, in terms of mindset and the part where we want to clear our space, you know, our internal space for working, right? Yeah. So there's yeah. that external, what we draw in from the outside world. And then how do we become that conduit for it? You know, how do we then translate yeah. that, right? And a lot of times what gets in the way for us is the judgment of, oh, well, that's not, you know, that's not really good enough, or that can't be, you know, something I want to paint. Mm -hmm. So that that's the other part of the awareness, I think, too, is just really kind of tuning in to the stories we might be telling ourselves about our ideas or about the things we might want to execute, you know, or, or work on. And then just really honor that noticing because it's so important what you just described there. I, I remember that time you talking about that and how that informed your work and still informs your work. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It's a big piece. It's a big piece. It's a, it's about who you are and your voice and yeah. your expression. Yeah. And so we do have to continually nurture you know, yeah, these spaces within ourselves, you know. That, so, that you know, sorry, so I, th I think then, you know, where we're getting to with this is that, you know, mindset is also, I think, about understanding 
you know, you talked about awareness, but I think it's also about being able to deconstruct, isn't it, your kind of internal thinking patterns and processes and experience so that you can start to make the connections with your art. So I think in that way, it's really useful to understand more about your mindset, because once you begin to notice the things that are important and significant to you, then you can feed it more. Actually, you can kind of put more in the bucket. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's kind of like a, you know, if I was to sort of line up the process and you may have a different order because everybody has a different way, but I would sort of say, you know, it's awareness, curiosity. So you're, you're noticing, and then you're curious about what you're noticing. And then I I think compassion is a huge piece, non-judging, you know, being in that place of not judging it. And that's really hard for us to do. (laughs) It's really a challenge for us most of the time to do. So being in that place of non-judgment And then, you know, reflection and integration of it, right? Like reflecting on it from that perspective of it's just, I often say to people, it's not bad or good. It's just information, you know, whatever's arriving, don't judge it as, or label it one or the other, just use it as information. That's a line of yours, actually. Yeah. 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 And you can, you can sort of, you know, toss it out. It may not be relevant, but it's worth looking at. It's worth holding on to for a little while. I mean, and, and you never know what that might lead to. So, you know, that real generosity with yourself, you know, of yeah. showing up and saying, okay, this is what I'm doing right now. And I know you and I were talking a little bit about reflective writing and reflective questions. Um, is that mm. something your group is going to be doing, some reflective writing? Yes. Around, yeah. Well, yeah. The, the kind of the invitation is there for them to take it up if they want to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great tool. I think it's a really great tool. Um, I'm a huge fan of it, as you yeah. know. Um, I, I've done a lot of journaling uh, for a lot of my years. It was one of the ways I really unpacked a lot of this stuff for myself. But um, one of the things that somebody recently, I'm running a 30-day sketchbook course right now, as, hmm. as you, you know, and I, there's a lot of reflective writing. And somebody also, and this might be helpful for your group, said, and I think you offered this, Lynn, uh, in a discussion we had um, around if, you know, how, where do you start? Like if you've never done any reflective writing and you want to, because you think it would be helpful for your process, where do you start? And you said, when we were talking about it with someone else in another group or part of the first thought, right? So before you even, you know, so, so often we're trying to find something succinct or something, you know, something that's really important or, you know, the right thing to write. Yeah. I think basically, yeah, whatever your first answer is, the first thought that comes into your mind I think we self-censor massively, you know, Mm -hmm. people generally, you know, if they're asked a question, you know, often people will kind of have an answer and then they'll question themselves, you know, bigly, actually, (laughs) before, (laughs) bigly, yeah, another word, yeah, Um, you know, before they answer or even think that that's okay, you know, and not just in the presence of other people, but in their own heads. So, you know, I'm very much an advocate of whatever comes up first, go with that because you never know where it's going to lead. And it can be really interesting just to follow that thought. You know? Absolutely. I think it really builds a level of self-trust too, as yeah. you as you continually yeah. do that, honoring the first thought, honoring what arrives yeah. without, as you said, so often we're negating it with these doubtful messages inside, you know, but when you actually turn to the, especially as artists, when we turn to the first impulse, the first thought, um, you know, I know yeah. that you're even working with that a lot in your work, you know, the first marks, the early marks, yeah. you know, that, yeah. that we tend to cover up and sort of, you know, not sure that they're actually good enough to be left, you know, and you're, you're in a place in your own work right now where you're sort of revealing more of that in your work. And, and mm. so tell, talk a little bit about that, because I think that's really interesting where you've come to with this. Yeah, well, that has been a really interesting process. Um, and it's been one that I think has been evolving for um oh gosh it could make it must be a good six or eight months actually so it started excuse me it started um way back in the summer actually I think with some and you know at the time I didn't know where this was going it was about following those first thoughts and following those impulses which was I feel like I want to do some charcoal sketching you know I just felt like I want to do some charcoal sketching and I think some of that was I was getting a little I wanted something new in my current work um, because a lot of it was um, quite heavy textured paint on wooden panel which was pushing me in a particular direction I think in terms of composition and I wanted to explore lighter freer compositions where it wasn't so much about um, you know shapes and forms that were around the edges but actually 
allow me to do more in the middle somehow. You know, that that was kind of interesting. Um, so I thought, actually, let's just play around with some charcoal because that might, you know, give me what I'm looking for. So I did quite a bit of that. And then what came out of that was some interesting new marks and some interesting shapes and ideas, which then led me to um, exploring similar ideas on paper. And again, as more I was doing this, it was, you know, it was, about, it was very much about freshness, immediacy, working with the, the sort of the early experiences, really, of what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, so I was doing that for a while on paper, and then I started putting some paper onto panels and some paper actually on, and some calico onto wooden panels as well, and using a lot of drawing media initially. Um, and ink actually rather than thick paint um, mm -hmm. and it's been interesting where I've got to with it um, you know I had a whole set of paintings which you saw quite recently um, mm -hmm. and you know I've been sitting with them since probably end of November last year not knowing where to take them next and not being sure if they were really finished so there was something here in this space of um, you know allowing that to be and not getting agitated or anxious or self-critical because I wasn't painting and you know I didn't know where to go with them next and you know I kept thinking you know there was a sort of mm, I'm not sure that these are done I'm not sure that I've said all I want to say but I don't know what I do want to say you know just like I had to I felt like I really had to like just be open to what happened next um and then what did happen next um I can't remember I think I just got started painting again and I just felt like something came together. In fact, I'll be about to show them in our kind yes. of our, our coaching group this week. Yeah. But, you know, they've moved on and I've moved on. And it feels like now where I'm at with them feels more satisfying. I've got that kind of gut sense that where I am, you know, is right. So I suppose mm -hmm. the whole um, the whole of that experience really has been about... Um, you know, really being willing, I think, to stay with the uncertainty and the not knowing mm -hmm. and to not let that rattle me. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's not what very I was, easy. It's not no, very I was really, easy, I was know, picking, because, yeah, I was picking up on some key things as you were talking, which was, first of all, you started with this impulse and you said, I'm just going to play. Yeah. Right. You didn't take that impulse and go to the canvas right away. You know, you said, no. I'm just going to play. I'm just going to do some charcoal and just see what this is. And you kind of let it flesh out from there, you know, and I thought that was, and as you said, I didn't know where this was going and you stayed with that discomfort. And I think that's so much about what art making is often about, you know, that yeah. being comfortable with the discomfort, the discomfort of not knowing, the discomfort of change, the discomfort of attachment and non-attachment, all of these things that we need to kind of negotiate and manage. But as you were talking about your whole process, which is thank you for sharing that, because that's going to be a beautiful contribution to my group that gets to listen to this. It's really about trusting, you know, the process and trusting yourself to just be led, but not be impatient with where it's going. Like that was so brilliantly um, sensed by you that there's something valuable there, but not push it so far so fast that you lost the sensitivity mm. to that, right? Which is what I was recognizing yeah. when I saw you going through the process is felt like you were really taking care of that new, you know, that new arm that was growing or new branch. Not quite sure where it was going to land. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I may very well, you know, circle back round to those earlier versions that you've seen, Cheryl. You know, mm -hmm. and I think I maybe will do. I just I'm not sure that I'm quite ready yet for that to be the work. You know, and it and it really didn't. It genuinely didn't feel like enough. You know, at the moment, it doesn't feel like that they were what I wanted to say. Right. And so again, that's you knowing yourself as an artist, right? Like other people. So this comes to another part of the important piece, which is your self focused, right? You're yeah. internally guided with your own work. Um, yeah. So there may be lots of people that would say, oh, they're great. They're fabulous. You <laughs> no, know, well, right? actually, <laughs> what was really interesting was, you know, the amount of kind of positive feedback that I was getting on places like Instagram and, you know, where I was mm -hmm. showing them. And I, the one thing that I was thinking through that was I need to not let that influence me right, because, right. you know, my gut is saying that these are not ready. I'm not, I'm not finished with these yet. You know, yeah. there's more I want to do. Yeah. You know, so I think, you know, all of these things that we're talking about now are about, I guess it's about kind of deconstructing your own process, isn't it? And also, you know, being really willing to trust yourself, actually. Yeah. 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 And, and provide yourself the opportunity where you need it. Like, you know, you gave yourself a low stakes place 
to experiment and, yeah. and discover, yeah. right? Yeah. So if we don't have, that's why I love the sketchbook work too, because you have a low yeah. stakes place, you know, as artists, we're, we're working on our formal work. And alongside that, we need to be able to experiment, play, invent, do other things that we can then pull into our work. But if it's always happening in the work itself, sometimes it doesn't quite translate, you know, it, just as you discovered, you needed more time with it to become something a little bit more integrated yeah. for you. Yeah, so it, it is a deconstruction and the a sensitivity, I think, too, a sensitivity mm. and, and kind of a nuanced sensitivity to, mm, I'm feeling something, I should honor this feeling, right? It's not quite, and is this feeling, you know, fear, resistance, and doubt, or is this feeling mm. wisdom, intuition, sensing? They're very that's different. a tough one, isn't it? That's a tough one, I think, for people to sometimes get their head around and to know, you know, and I, I think it's, you know, because I was saying that, wasn't I? I was saying, you know, I'm not sure if my you know, my feeling about this work is, you know, is this anxiety that I'm feeling that I don't, I'm not ready to show this yet because it feels too raw and too vulnerable, you know, and I'm not ready to be at this place or is it that I genuinely want more, you know? Mm -hmm. And I suppose all I can say to people with that is actually sometimes we just don't know. Yep. And sometimes you just need to take your time. Yeah. And just wait and sit it out and see what happens, I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but I do think, actually, you know, the more we engage with this kind of dialogue that you and I have in, you know, this evening, and the more that we talk to other people about it, and the more that we kind of spend time connecting with ourselves, actually, and learning about ourselves and getting to know ourselves better, the easier it gets. Absolutely. I would agree with that 100%. And I think even just listening to a dialogue like this is helpful, you know, because it's opening up that uh, bandwidth and that potential for, uh, you know, finding another artist companion, you know, and really sort of having a dialogue about your work and their work and yeah. helping each other to kind of, you know, grow and strengthen we're at, we live in a time as artists where that's more accessible to us than ever you know and we're not just holed up in our studios alone and isolated which is you know kind of what artists used to do and they mm. didn't have a lot of feedback right or a lot of opportunity so feedback has you know it's kind of a double-edged coin in a way it's great and it's also as you said it can kind of you know course can kind of guide us on a course where we may be not necessarily ready to go because we get too much external uh, yeah. accolades or even too much external criticism so it's it's an interesting place to be so yeah well, this is this is lovely is is there something um that we haven't touched on lynn that you wanted to talk well, about i was just today? wondering actually yeah because um you know there's a, quite a few people that are doing my course for example mm -hmm. that are, i think they're fairly new to abstraction so mm -hmm. i'm just wondering <coughs> excuse me so you know i think they're in that early place of um I guess, finding their voice, learning some skills, learning some techniques and dealing with, you know, that kind of process that I can remember I went through, actually, you know, of like, like, how do I do this? <laughs> you know, that yeah. feeling of how do I make something look yeah. like something? You know, and yeah. I think that some of that is skill and technique, but I also think that actually quite a bit of that is also mindset as well. You know, it's kind of that early stage, but I just wonder what your thoughts were on that, actually. Well, I, yeah, that's a great question. And I think that if you can, uh, like what you're giving them right now, <laughs> you know, in the way of this course is a full faceted understanding of art making, not only the techniques, but the mindset piece. So I think that if you have that early on, you lay a good foundation to build from, right? If you can immediately, yeah. like initially when a lot of artists begin, and I'm not saying this with your students, but it is pretty joyful. It's like they get to express and that's something yeah. they've been wanting to do for a really long time, right? Oh, I can't wait to just get in there and throw some paint around and express. And at some point it gets a little more serious for us. You know, we start to want something from the work. We start to want to be able to see ourselves and feel our own voice coming through. And so, you know, that takes time. It takes time and persistence and dedication to the work. And oftentimes we want it a little bit quicker or we want a roadmap. So I think learning with someone like yourself that has, you know, great strategy for helping people to find their own way is important, right? Because your, your way is different than theirs. Um, but having somebody that can, can open you up to the language of abstraction, if that's a new territory for you. Um, and there's gonna be a lot of messes made. <laughs> along the way as you figure it out and yeah. it's going to be and that's okay that's how that's how we learn right if we expect and this was one of my biggest problems I expected every single painting to be successful every single thing I touched had to be successful be, yeah 
Yeah. And it yeah, was so way too much day, pressure, <laughs> way too much pressure. Right. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, it doesn't give you any room, you know, to have, um, I mean, I, you think about a, a musician picking up an instrument for the first time and saying, okay, I want to play the cello, you know, yeah. you wouldn't expect after their third lesson, you know, that they would play a masterpiece or that they would have something even tolerable to listen to. Yeah. Right? So we need to give ourselves that space for learning. And I think if artists are transitioning from representational painting to abstraction, like you did, it's a bit of a different way of thinking mm. as well, right? Because subject matter is so different. Yeah. Right. And so that becomes, you know, another kind of mental shift that, that an artist needs to make. What are we drawing on as subject mm. matter? And how do we articulate that? And so yeah. much of it is really paying attention, that call and response. And, you know, certainly the, you know, the understandings of color, form, and all the design principles that you're teaching are important. And then they get utilized, you know, in, in your expression. Yeah. But just being patient and um, recognizing that this is, you know, this is something that does take time to build. And the more you do it, the better you're going to get. And the more you can reflect on what you're doing, I think, mm -hmm. is another piece because that really harnesses the discoveries. So you'll be experimenting, you're discovering, but then you reflect on those discoveries and that becomes the piece that carries forward. You know, what is valuable here? You know, yeah. what am I really connected with in this work? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, it makes sense to me. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, if I think back on, you know, what that was like for me a few years ago, you know, it was about that actually, you know, it was about really listening out for, um, and noticing the the things that were really working for me you know the things that I felt that spark of interest or excitement or mm -hmm. you know where I felt really connected to what I was doing um so that I could follow them you know if I, I've looked back quite recently at some of my work you know and I, and I kind of spotted one or two paintings that I think were definitely precursors of what I'm doing now mm. you know and I look at them and I think mm, that's really interesting you know there I was doing that then you know I was doing that then yeah. You know, and I kind of then I went off in a, another tangent again for a while, you know, while I was I think while I was trying to. Um, how would I describe it, I guess, you know, move my mindset and my frame of reference, I think, from having been a landscape painter for, you know, eight or nine years where I didn't, you know, just painted seas and trees and tree, trees and seas and trees and sea really for mm -hmm. a long time, mm -hmm. you know, so to kind of shift, I think, from looking at the world and seeing the world in that way to you know a kind of a different form of expression I think you know so if I look back on some of the early stuff that I was doing you know sort of probably about 2018 I think 2017 2018 something like that you know I can still see a very strong landscape influence in you know some of the colors that I was using and some of the shapes that I was using but it's you know it, it slowly started to dissipate and then you know, different forms started to emerge, I think, much more strongly, you know, much more architectural, structural kind of forms, I think, which is really interesting, you know, because when I think about what I used to paint, you know, which is all about landscape and sea, and then to be now doing stuff which is much more structural feels quite interesting, but I guess it was always there. Yeah, I think that's what's so helpful about looking back, you know, and uh, some artists often paint over their older works. I'm like, don't do it just yet. Like, hang on to them because you, you see yourself, the seeds of yourself, this as you expressed. It's been yeah. there all along. And it's, a you know, if you've had some time in your work and you can go back and you're still struggling a little bit in the present with, well, what is my voice or what direction do I want to take? That can be such a profound experience to look back objectively at your yeah. work, just as you just yeah. and see that the common things, for me, it was like structure, the grid, separation of division of space, no matter how much I tried as an artist, it always showed up. And I, I had a judgment in my head that that was wrong because mm. Lynn, I'm a structured person, but I don't want people to know that, right? For some reason, I wanna be like my, I always admired the wild, crazy artists since art school, right? The ones that were completely abandoned of all their cares and just showed who they were. That's who I wanted to be, but it isn't who I am, really. No. You know, okay. in, in, in the core of can only be ourselves, can't we? Actually, right. we can really yeah. only be ourselves. Yeah. I can only be myself. And I so I would the structure would appear and I would kill it, knock it back, and then I'd be so frustrated in my work for a long period of time because it wasn't holding up. 
And then suddenly I'd let, the, let go and the structure would come back in and it would feel better and I'd sort of surrender to it. I did this battle for a really long time in my work and now I'm just kind of, okay, this is it. Like this yeah. is this is where I wanna be with it. This feels so right. And it's yeah. it's so much easier to be ourselves. <laughs> so much and try to shoehorn yourself into something that just doesn't feel right yeah yes you know like and that comes from also from acceptance of that like I don't want to be someone else and when I look at other artists work who I admire even it's quite different than mine I can still really admire it and still take something from it of value for myself you know maybe even kind of steal like an artist idea you know like there's something a color or something there but I don't want to be that artist anymore You know, I, I just want to get stronger in my own work. And, and that's a really great place to get to, you know, when you can sort of recognize yeah. that you're okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Wasn't, wasn't there a psychology book written about that one? I'm okay. You're okay. I remember I'm that in high okay. school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're all okay. <laughs> I wish and, I, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that feels good. It feels like it's a wrap, as they would say. It it feels like a wrap to me, too. Yeah, that was really, I think we could go on and on. But of course, that, you know, that wouldn't uh, necessarily work well for uh, consumption of of this information. So hopefully this was a good chat. uh, Yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's been great chatting with you, Sharon. I hope people enjoy it when they watch this as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll Um, see you soon. I'll see you soon. Okay. Okay. Bye, Lynn. Bye.